A lot of people right now are wondering if it's a good time or not a good time to buy property in 2023 or make a move. And from the conversations that I've had in the last few weeks with people who want to make a move in the future, it's obvious that there's still a lot of uncertainty, which is completely understandable and normal in a market that has changed suddenly, right? Where we've seen massive price increases and swift declines in one given year. So is it a good time to buy? The answer is yes, but also no. And it really depends. Now, let me know in the comments below where your mindset is at with everything that's going on. Let me know what your thoughts are about the market, the economy, and really just in general. I'm super curious to know how everyone is feeling right now. Now, in a market like this, where prices have come back down to earth, unveils a lot of opportunity, but it's only an opportunity if you're ready. My name is Alice Prince. I am a broker with Royal Page Signature and team lead of Prince & Co. And we help people buy, sell, and invest in York Region, Durham Region, and Toronto. Now, if you would like to schedule a time to chat about your future goals when it comes to real estate, use the link in the description below to book a time that is convenient for you. It is super easy. Just type in your name and click a date and time that works best for you. In the meantime, I'm trying to get this little channel to grow and my kiddos have challenged me to grow this channel to 1000 subscribers. So it is game on. And if you could please hit that like and subscribe button, it would honestly mean the world. So before we jump right into this, I just want to mention that this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I do work in real estate and have a lot of professional opinion on this that can be backed up by stats and facts. But I think a lot of this is just common sense. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about um, who are the people that should sit this out for a little bit longer and who are the ones who should be taking advantage of what's going on. Now, I just want to start off by saying the market isn't good for everybody. And I always say that it will always favor a group, whether it's buyers, sellers, first time home buyers, move up buyers, downsizers, more than the other, right? And I heard this saying before from a colleague and friend of mine, Tom Story, and it's always stuck with me. And he says, there's no good weather, there's no bad weather, there's just inappropriate clothing choices. And I think that that is so brilliant because like you're not gonna wear running shoes in the rain, you'd likely wear rain boots because that's appropriate. And although you may not like the rain, but let's say you're a farmer and you would obviously love the rain because you're gonna be able to water your crops that way instead of paying for water. And if we were to relate that back to real estate, I find that analogy super helpful. There's no good market or there's no bad market. It really depends on your situation. So first and foremost, if you feel like you are being stretched, then even with the price declines, we're still expecting to enter into a recession, right? We hear this all the time. If inflation continues and your income doesn't keep up with the rate of inflation, those extra costs for groceries, clothes, gas will mean that you're going to feel more squeezed. And the last thing you want to do is become house poor. We're human and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think most of us want to eat, work and play, but you won't be able to do that. If you feel like you're living an unfulfilled life, if all your income is going towards that roof over your head. Secondly, if your job security is feeling a little bit wobbly or you have inconsistent income, you probably want to consider pumping the brakes on your home purchase. The last thing that you want to do is to be forced to sell in six to 12 months, especially while the market is still working at itself out with home values. It's risky and the cost of moving is can be pricey. Now you'll have to obviously break your mortgage, pay the movers, pay the lawyers, pay the realtors, and all of this can add up so, so quickly. But in the meantime, use this time to cut expenses, save more money to build a little bit of an emergency fund, or if you still wanna get into the market and take advantage of what's going on and keeping your financial story obviously in mind, maybe it would make more sense to make a purchase on a smaller property, rent it out and wait for it to appreciate while you're continuing to rent where you own, pull that equity out down the line and use that as your down payment. So in the future that you could be able to afford the home that you actually want and likely put yourself in a better financial situation. Some good news is that our job market is still very relatively pretty strong. That's what's so different about this recession. So maybe you'll also be in a position to get a better job with security and higher income. This third point can actually go both ways. And this market can either be good for first time home buyers or challenging for first time home buyers. And I just want to preface this next section by saying typically realtors are referred to as salespeople, but something that I hold near and dear to my heart, something that I've built my business on is giving people all the information and having them decide when is the best time for them. I'm not here to give you a hard sell or to convince you that you should be purchasing. So I'm not here to give you a hard sell or to convince you when you should be purchasing that property. My goal of these videos is to add perspective, make it educational and provide a value added service. 
So first time home buyers have a big opportunity right now to get into the market where they wouldn't be finding themselves competing against 10, 15, 20 other buyers on most properties versus what they would have experienced at the beginning of last year. If you're a buyer in this market, whether this is your first time or your fifth time making a purchase, another great plus is that your down payment and your land transfer tax, which make up a significant portion of your closing costs, is going to be much smaller than it would have been when the market was busier and the homes home prices were higher. Now, something that I always find interesting is that generally speaking, people feel good about the market when it's hot. Everybody wants to purchase. Although cost to borrowing money was cheaper back then, buyers often found themselves in hefty competition and usually paying more than the home was worth and not being able to put in conditions like home inspections or mortgage condition was not something that we see in hot markets typically just to win that home. Right now you have the opportunity to actually think to consider your home purchase, to negotiate favorable terms instead of being at the mercy of the sellers and to be able to do your due diligence properly. So I'm seeing properties being negotiated for five to 10% below their list price right now. So if you're someone who has steady income and all your debt obligations under control and have been living in your home for the last five years or so, and are looking to make a move up in housing types because you've maybe grown some equity or maybe you're outgrowing your space. So for example, you know, you're moving from a condo to a townhouse or a townhouse to a detached property. Now would be a good idea to actually explore your options because at the start of 20 2022, the price difference from let's say a condo townhouse to a detached townhouse or detached home in your region was $814,000 versus now the price difference is $547,000. In Durham region during the peak, the jump up in housing types was a difference of $440,000 versus now being $296,000. So that price gap from a townhouse to a detached is much smaller than it was a few months ago. Now we know that the market is cyclical. It goes up, it goes down, it goes side ways and if those numbers make sense to you and you can afford it and you need to make a move because let's face it life happens then you should consider making a move this year but only if you have a five-year outlook where you're not going to be making a move in five years ideally ten now time in the market is your friend five years is the minimum because you're likely going to ride out any dips and blips in the marketplace the longer that you stay invested in the real estate market and hold on to that property the higher chances you're you're going to be in a better position moving forward. And I mentioned 10 years because in 1989, we had a real estate crash here in the GTA and it lasted until 1996. It was a challenging time and if people sold and exited the market, they lost a bunch of money because even if they bought a property at the peak before things kind of took a dive, you were a and you were able to fight that pit in your stomach and make your mortgage payments during that time when prices were down. History has shown us that long term, especially Especially with a 10 year mindset, you're going to be in a good position moving forward. Now, since then, we've really only have ever had three times when looking at the market on an annual basis where prices have decreased. So in 2008, that's when we seen what happened south of the border with our neighbors in the States. In the second half of 2017, when we implemented the Fair Point Housing Act and foreign buyer tax, and also had the stress test implemented the following year. And then obviously now and what's going on. But if remember, if we were to compare 2022 to 2021, the average price for the the entire year was up 8%. Now, something that I want to mention is that as we move into 2023, is that the media is going to come out with these clickbait headlines in the next couple months as they compare the data and the average prices of January and February to last January and February. So just take that with a grain of salt. Now, do I think that we're going to see prices drop? I actually think that we can see a minimal decline moving forward compared to what we've seen. I think that the bulk of everything is kind of behind us and we're going to continue to see stabilization. I don't see prices rising anytime soon, which brings me to my next point. We've seen 10 to 12% increases on average every year over the last decade. And over the last 40 years, prices have appreciated 7% annually. So if you think that you're going to get into this property and you're kind of going into this mindset of, okay, I'm going to buy this property. And if it appreciates four to 5%, then Hey, I'm going to be happy. Now I'm not the type of realtor to sit here and tell you that the market only goes up because I actually think that that's quite silly, but let's play worst case scenario. And if you're okay with that three to 5% increase yearly, then it's sort of like, and I also heard this from my friend and colleague, 
it's sort of like under promising and over delivering for yourself. But I think that if you have this type of mindset, then you're going to be pleasantly surprised. And in the future, long term, you're going to be in a better situation and position. So if you think you're still not ready or still a little bit hesitant, or if you're not ready, or if you are ready, but are still a little bit unsure about the next steps, I would love to connect. All the information can be found below. And I can also connect you with a mortgage broker. Or if you have a trusted mortgage rep you're already dealing with, start there. Work out those numbers not just on a purchase price level, but on that monthly cost level, because you're not just buying the purchase price, you're buying that monthly payment. Also, if you've made it this far, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Click the link in the description below to download your free buyer's guide. It's packed with valuable information and really simplifies the process. I'm Alice Prince. Ciao for now, and we will catch you on the next one.